Hey guys, Garage here, and check this out. I have a brand new dual fuel generator that I'm going to be doing a full review on. This is the Heomato, I guess that's how you say it, they're a brand new company, um, HMT 3500ID. It's a 3000 plus watt dual fuel generator in a little tiny package like that Pulsar that I reviewed a little while back, the GD400BN. Little tiny package, 50 pound weight. That is incredible amount of output for such a little tiny generator. This one also bests that little tiny Pulsar that I really like because it has a full digital readout on it. It gives you fuel level. It gives you your power output. It gives you your voltage, your frequency. Um, it gives you a hour meter on there so you can track it for maintenance. Like all that stuff is built into it. The price point was really, really good. I bought this on Amazon, my own money. No one sent this to me. This isn't like a paid promotion, nothing like that. I bought this with my own money. If this thing is junk, I'm going to tell you. I'm going to send it back. If this thing is great, I'm going to tell you. Um, and of course I'll probably be doing some long-term reviews on it because if it works out well, we'll keep it around just like our other generators. I got generators all over the place here that I play with on occasion. So yeah, very excited about this. Um, all of our testing is going to be coming up. We're going to knock this thing out and tell you ultimately if this thing is worth a darn or not. If it is, and you guys like the video, um, please subscribe to our channel and then also if you're going to buy a generator or buy this one, please check the video links. If you click on those links, it helps me out. I'm not begging, but man, I tell you, when you click on links and, and uh, do that kind of thing, the like and subscribe, it helps the YouTube algorithm and it helps us make a little coin for all of our efforts because I know I'm going to put in a whole freaking day's worth of effort just to test this thing for you guys. So yeah, let's get on this. Let's check it out. I wanted to show you guys side by side the new Heomato versus the Pulsar that I really like. Now, one thing you'll notice right away is the Pulsar, the control layout on here, or the panel layout on here, it looks like they took all the components and threw them in a dartboard and then said, oh, that's our panel because it looks like absolute crap. There's no rhyme or reason or design to that panel. It's just stuff stuck everywhere. The Heomato looks like a professional did it. It looks very, very nice, very well laid out. I really like the panel on that. Uh, so it's already a win for this new guy here. And the digital screen, I mean, that just takes it to the next level. You can do your maintenance off that for your hour meter, um, your fuel level, you get your output, you know, if you're overloaded, you can just see it at a glance. That's a huge, huge benefit for not much more cash. Um, Size-wise, as I mentioned, the Heomato looks a lot bigger. It's not. The width is virtually identical when you put a tape measure on it down low. I don't know why it looks so much bigger. It's just a tr like an optical illusion. I think it might bulge a little more, but it actually is about the same width. But it looks a lot bigger because up top here, it's a lot more boxy. The Pulsar tapers on the sides. Now, there's a reason this is more boxy. The fuel tank in this new Heomato is bigger. It's a half gallon bigger. So you get about 1.6 gallons of gas or 1.5, I think, gallons of gas in the new one, Heomato, versus one gallon even on the Pulsar. So it's a bigger fuel tank, which is why it looks a little more boxy. Depth-wise, they're identical. It's the same thing. Height-wise, this new Heomato, see if I can get down there, we're about a half inch taller on it. Not much, just a little tiny bit. We will weigh these. Um, this this one comes in, the Pulsar comes in at like 47.5 pounds dry. This one supposedly comes in at, at uh, right at 50. Uh, that's fine. It's in that 50 pound weight category. It doesn't have a pull-out luggage handle, no wheels, which I really like. And the reason I brought that up is the chassis was molded for it. So there are cutouts for where wheels could have gone. And on the bottom, when you tip it up, you can see, I don't know if I can see this. No, you can't really, but there's a um, molded place for a luggage handle where it could have gone. I'm so thankful they didn't put that on there. I don't want that rattly, crappy noise. This thing does not need wheels. It's just kind of annoying. So um, they didn't do it. That's a win already. All right, enough for the walk around. Uh, oh, one other little thing that caught my eye on this too. Full start right up top. I do like that. Looks a little strange with the big red start on there. But uh, Pulsars is down low. It's never been a problem down low. But I do like where they put this on the Heomato. As I've mentioned in previous videos, I am not a fan of unboxing videos while I slowly take stuff out and show you each thing and unwrap it. That's just, I don't know, not my thing. So this is what you get with the generator. Uh, you get a uh, propane regulator. 
you get um, a TT30R adapter. So it goes from 30 amp twist lock to TT30R. I wish they would have just put this on the panel. They did not. That's about the only ding at a high level that I can think of on this guy. And you got an oil funnel and you've got a very well-written manual. They actually have some good info here that other manufacturers don't recommend that these guys do. Like if you're going to run very high draw loads, like say an air conditioner or something, that's taking it right up towards the max of its uh, power range or 75% or more of its usable power. Don't run it on eco mode. This thing can't go from basically idle to hundred percent instantaneously. And people complain about that on other generators. They put this huge surge load on when they have it on eco mode and it suddenly bogged down. Well, that's actually normal. So don't run on eco and you're not going to have that problem. So they, I caught a lot of little details in here. I'm like, hey, that's actually pretty nice. So the manual's well done. Have a spark plug wrench and a Phillips screwdriver and a little case for your tools. Pretty basic for what you get. Do take note, this generator does not come with break-in oil. They don't include it. That's totally fine. I'd rather not include it, I'd rather use my own. And so, but just take note, you will need to have some engine oil with you for the break-in. And we're going to fill this thing up anyways, and uh, let's get to that uh, first start. All right, guys, so let's do this first start. Let's see how it goes. We're going to start it on propane first. And take our hose, attach it to our tank, and attach the propane end port and crank our tank on and now we're gonna back this off till we hear a little bit of a hissing noise count eight seconds all right we're gonna stop it I don't know if I should do choke or if I should just put it on run for propane. Sometimes it varies between generator. Why don't we just put it on choke? Let's see what happens. Get this gas tank out of the way. Let's see what we get. Ooh, kind of started. Started to. Wanted to. Oof. Let's try this again. off let's add some gas Ooh. I'd say that's plenty let's see how this thing starts up for a first start on gas I've had some of these dual fuel generators. I'm just making sure there's enough gas in here to get down to the carburetor, down to the bowl. I didn't put much in it. So let's go to choke. Still, I can still touch the exhaust on it, so it's not super warm yet. Let's see what we got on gas. Run. Let's see what happens on run. I like starting on run. Wow, 
Wow, again. Super, super smooth. Pop the USB cover starting it. On gas, it also, eco mode was on by default. I guess that's just what it is. really weird and shake and rock and bug. This thing feels great. There you have it. First starts. Boom, we have her torn down. You can see definitely a, a different exhaust system than I've seen before. I did verify, the reason why the exhaust looks different is a generating assembly. I did verify it right there. She's Sensi, just like I had suspected. Haven't torn one of these down before. This is kind of interesting. Intake and exhaust valves have this strange little coupler system. Propane regulator, they had to tuck it clear down here on the side where this guy usually is up top on, say, a Pulsar. They really did cram 10 pounds of crap into like a 5-pound box on this. It is so tight. But one thing I noticed, they took extra care to add chafe material in here, anywhere that might rub plastics. Like, they actually went the extra mile to make sure this thing was a good build. Now, while it is super crammed, very well done, I did see in here... A little odd, we got horizontal fins on this um, inverter assembly. This is what produces your power. And this, don't know if you can see it down in there, it's a 3.3 kilowatt inverter. This means that the inverter is rated for more than they claim on the generator label. That could mean that the really the limiting factor on the power output is how much power that this thing can produce from the gasoline side or the um, propane side. Got our fuel tank, see our fuel level sender here. That's actually not nearly as tight as you think. I just kind of laid it there. Um, I had to take this cover off. I don't want to take apart the pull start, so I just kind of pulled it out, let it sit there. You can see some numbers here, part number for it. 149 cc unit, I verified. All the electrical, very well kept. Again, At just a high level, this thing just looks really well. It looks really well built. Carburetor, typical for these dual fuels, it's a Yenba. You can see the little, ah, not sure if I'm getting it here. Let me turn down the brightness. There we go. That is our... Um, that is how the carburetor is actually actuated. Since this is electronic throttle control, that's our little servo. It actuates it. It doesn't look like there's any adjustment if you needed to turn it up or down a little bit. But I could always explore that if we have a problem. This is our choke. Paper gasket. I'm going to go ahead and do what I always do on these. Both sides of this gasket are going to get a little bit of grease, just a really fine coat. You want to do that uh, so that gasket isn't ruined. So the next time you take this apart at 300 hours or so when you need to do valve lash, uh, maybe even longer, that gasket's not going to be a part of the engine and just rip and shred off. It's literally going to lift off. It's never going to leak when you add grease to them. It should be a practice that more people do, but I don't know why. It just seems like me doing it, but it works very, very well. No leaks, nothing. So we'll grease that up, the gasket, put it back together. Spark plug was an AT5. Oh, what was that sucker? Here we go. A5RTC, which is a torch plug. This one's weirdly branded LG, but the part number means it's torch. 
brand. Um, typical generic nickel, nickel tip spark plug. Be changing that out for iridium. This will cross reference over to a CR7 HIX from memory. So it's a seven heat range, even though this is a five on torch, the proper cross will be a seven heat range um, plug that we'll go to. And I'll end up changing this out actually while we're in here. I don't need to now add an hour meter to this, so I'm not going to be adding anything to it other than really a spark plug, and we'll get rid of this dipstick, go to a magnetic dipstick. That's really the only mods on this generator I'm going to do. Um, it started up very, very nice. It ran on propane, ran on fuel, as you guys just previously saw a minute ago. Everything runs really well, so there's no reason for me to do any more modification. It's just ran excellent. But that's it for our teardown. such a big flange for the spark arrestor on this let's see not gonna do that one-handed without stripping it let me take that spark arrestor off i want to see if it's like a cone type spark arrestor or if it's just the screen so let me take that off and shut the camera off just for a split second all right so the spark arrestor is a stainless steel screen i've got two eight millimeter screws these are pretty much made of mush metal so don't try to use a phillips screwdriver to take those out use an eight millimeter take it off if you need to clean your spark arrestor i can't tell how loud it is by just looking at the muffler so we'll wait for our sound test for that um but going through a few other things you'll see some rubber grommets here now on the cover you've got multiple places for grommets to go and that cover really pulls hard. Actually, this cover really pulls hard on all this grommet, so it ejected a few of those, and I took the cover off, and they went down in the bottom, so just be aware of that. Uh, I do have my magnetic dipstick installed. Uh, we're going to go ahead and finish the full one-hour break-in. I want to make sure, uh, after we did our start test, I want to make sure I have this in place just to make sure I capture any um, steel material in there and get that out of the oil. It's just going to help the longevity of the motor. I uh, got our spark plug installed. Um, that is a gasketed plug, so once you tighten the spark plug by hand, it's just one half turn exactly more to seat the gasket. I went ahead and greased up, put a very, very thin layer of grease on my actual paper gasket. That'll prevent that from sticking, so I'll, I'll be able to reuse that gasket in the future. Uh, one thing of note, the way these generators assemblies, generator assemblies work is they've got a fan in the front here. And that fan sucks air through this plastic case. You notice the motor and the generating assembly is all encased in plastic. That fan sucks air through the whole assembly, blows it out this exhaust piece, and actually cools everything. It cools the motor, cools the, the muffler, it cools everything. So the thing really doesn't catch on fire with how much it's crammed in here. Now, also, just to note, that's why all these generators, that's why they all have this venting up front, is they're drawing air through the assembly, over the heat sink of the inverter unit, and then through the engine. So I just want to make sure you understand how that works. But what's different about this Sensi, normally the valve cover cap just goes on, and that's it. And there's a little bit of an air gap around it. No big deal. This one has this extra plastic guard that goes over the top of everything, and it completely seals up the case, so there's no hot air leakage anywhere. It completely forces all the hot air through the generating assembly and out the back. Just another nice little extra touch, along with things that show that they cared when they assembled it, assembled it like all these little chafe pads. That's just the right way to do it. I was kind of impressed with that. Um, yeah, so let's get this break-in finished for a full one-hour runtime. Let's uh, see what we got on our magnetic dipstick. Let's see how the oil looks. And um, then after that... We are going to do some load testing. Uh, we'll get our sound output levels. We'll see how loud this thing is compared to other generators that I've tested. And uh, we'll go from there. So yeah, let me get this all put back together. And I'll see you in a little bit. First oil change. But man, I tell you, one of those days. Somehow, I thought I pressed a button. I didn't actually record me pouring the oil out. Is what it is. The oil is nothing to write home about. Um, pretty dang normal for a first oil change. You can definitely see, I don't know if you can see it in there. A little bit of glitter on the top. Nothing awful. Really low amount of actual iron on the tip of the magnetic dipstick. And this is the first hour of runtime. That's rather impressive. 
I think it's probably for a brand new motor. It's probably about the best I've seen when it comes to metal shavings. Um, the oil, again, nothing to write home about. That was just T4 1540 that I had. It's pretty dark. Like I said, very minimal stripper dust in there. There definitely is some. I don't think the camera is picking it up very well. But it's really, really fine. It's more like a milky... Yeah, I'm just not picking it up. It's more like a milky haze. But, um... Nothing, like I said, nothing really terrible. And, of course, I did not fill it up on camera. Um, I went, and, went ahead and added oil back in, so I switched over to T6 Rotella. And it's as simple as the Pulsar video. It Basically, you just add it in through the funnel that's included. No big deal. Uh, it takes half a quart, so 0.5 quarts. And um, 0.5 quarts, I can tell you, brought it right to the edge to the point I had to tip it back a little bit or it would start to pour out. So if I, I kind of got it set up on this uh, pick right here, but if I set it down level, oil will just start to come out. So, um, but anyways, let's go ahead and wipe this. Ah, dropped it. Let's get this magnetic dipstick wiped off. Doing this one-handed. I'm not that skilled at it, apparently, especially doing it one-handed. Here we go. Now we're clean. Clean. Put this guy back in. Whew, it's hot. Hot, 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 hot. It was hot while I was rubbing it on the paper towel. Toasty. All right, that is it. I do wish this generator had an oil um, door, basically like a service door like the Pulsar does. That's a really nice feature. You do have to take off the entire side panel on this to get to your oil fill. So a little bit of a ding there. I do wish it had that, but that's what it is. But uh, that's it for the first oil change. I mean, it was quite simple. Just put in your funnel, tip the generator, pour it into a container, make sure you don't spill the hot oil on you because that would really suck. And then just fill it back up with a half quart done deal um do try to do at least an oil change in the first hour on any generator that you buy always in the first hour after runtime and then even after that i wouldn't wait really longer than two or three hours for the second oil change the more you can get all the nastiness out of the engine just from when they assembled it and anything that was in the factory the better off you are and the better off your generator is so Let's get on to load testing now that we got a solid hour on this thing. Um, I don't really recommend load testing at one hour for all of you guys. I just do this for you because, well, I'm making a review video. So load testing, I do it as quickly as possible. I don't want to load it too hard for too long. We'll run it up to max, see what it can do, and then we're going to shut her down, let it cool down in between, uh, in between tests. So let's get on it. So we're going to go ahead and load this guy up. Got an eco right now. Zero watt draw. Zero watt draw. We're going to turn off eco mode. Now we're going to add in 1500 watts of draw. And it like a champ. I've got these little heaters here and they surge a little bit. So we saw it surge up and now it's dropping back down. 1.5 thousand watts. 5, so they match really well. Now we're going to kick in the second heater. Saw a big surge there, but it handled it like a champ. We didn't see the LED light flicker to red, which means it went kind of into the danger zone, but it recovered nicely. Very good. 3,000 watts. I can 
add a little more draw to it. thing says it will surge to 3,500 watts and run at 3,000 watts continuous. It actually ran at 3,200 watts, no problem at all. Surge to 3.5, no problem at all. It does exactly what it says it's going to do. I can't ask for more than that. That's awesome. Let's try it out on propane. So let's do this load test on propane. Just fired it up, drain gas. Definitely running on propane only right now. And uh, let's go ahead and turn off eco mode for our testing. She ramped up nicely. We're gonna turn on our first heater. See the power draw ramping up. I have it verified on my little meter down here. Very accurate for built-in. We're going to let this first heater kind of settle down a little bit. Alright, now we're going to flip on the second heater. No problem at all. Put it on eco. All right, we're gonna let this thing cool down. We're gonna let it run. We're gonna let the internal fan cool off the inverter, sucking air through it. We're gonna let it slowly, slowly power down. All right, let's walk through the display really fast. This is a really nice display. This is our eco mode button. shifts it up into a higher RPM, no matter the load, it's higher RPM. We have our fuel gauge, which is showing empty right now because I don't have much fuel left in this. Um, if you're full, this actually goes into a full circle, so you can see your fuel level. I have our voltage and kilowatt output. If I was at 500 watts of draw on this, it would say 0.5. If I was at 1,000 watts, it would say 1.0. Okay. This button right here 
is the status of the inverter. If this is blinking, then that usually means you're in clipping, you're overloading the generator. If it goes red, that means you've really, you're really overloading it. If the, if the inverter goes into protect, this will go red and you have to press that to reset it, to reset your inverter. Ask me how I know. <laughs> All right, so this button toggles us through a menu. We're at 125 volts. This is our current run time. I've been running for two minutes. So every time I turn the generator off, that's going to reset. That is our total hour meter. Counted in whole hours. So I've got a little over one hour on this thing, so it's showing one hour. It's a lifetime counter. This will never reset. 60 hertz is the frequency in, in conjunction with the voltage that you saw earlier. So that's the frequency of the output. And back to voltage. Looking over the test results, the Pulsar does best the Heiomato at idle. At 50% load, it's really, really close. The Pulsar is a little bit louder, and then at 100% load, um, they're pretty much identical, at least on the meter. Let's take a listen to how they actually sound when we compare the Pulsar directly to the Heiomato. This is one of those cases where the meter just does not tell the whole story. So as you just heard, the Pulsar has a much more pleasant tone with the Heiomato being a little bit higher pitched, even though the DB meter is really not showing that. Um, it is higher pitched. The Pulsar just has a much more, more of a bass tone to it, a little more of a pleasant sound. And it's something you really can only hear if you are literally have them side by side and you can do an A and B comparison like I did. In this case, I've got to give the Pulsar the nod. I would say it actually wins the sound test. Even though this isn't a head-to-head -head competition, these are just two generator options, but I do like the way the Pulsar sounds. Guys, it has been a long day. Super Bowl is going on right now. I've been at this literally all day long testing this thing. Super impressed with it. It produced all the power that it said it would produce, um, plus more. The surge capacity was really impressive on this. I think the Pulsar, if I'm going from memory on this, um, it was like 3,300 watts, and that really capped out, and that thing was clipping like crazy. I mean, that was the end of what it had. This thing surged all the way to 3.6, 3,600 watts. That is incredible on the surge. It was super smooth on first start. It idles really well. It runs on propane and fuel equally. Like I couldn't tell the difference at my altitude. Those are all awesome things. At this point in time with everything that I've seen and in my test and the one sample that I have here, I would highly recommend this. But here's the deal. If you're buying a generator and then you're looking for something in the 3000 watt range in this 50 pound weight class, and you're deciding between the Pulsar and this, you're going to have to weigh it out. Because Here's the deal. If you get a coupon, the Pulsar is like 500 bucks. If you get a coupon for this, this is like $600. I absolutely feel all the features on this, like the display and so forth, and the extra surge capacity is worth $100. But if you get the Pulsar for 500 and this one is at its regular price of $699, it's a $200 difference. That's, that's eh, I don't know. It, it's going to have to come down to what you want at, um, from the, as the buyer. Uh, when it comes down to warranty work and the company itself, this is a newer company. Pulsar has been around a long time. These guys, at least as a company name in the U.S., they seem very, very new. I'm going to tell you a little bit of dirt, though. All right, so I've sent in five emails to the company uh, through their through their web form or their portal. I've not gotten one response, and that was well before Chinese New Year. Um, I did send one email directly to their email address. Still crickets. That's a little concerning. But... The Amazon store that I bought it from, Sai or whoever's linked in my video description, we look at it, they've been super responsive. So I'm waiting on getting some more information back from them to see how responsive and helpful they really are. But yeah, you can message them. They sent me a proactive email out just telling me, hey, every this is how the generator works. Here is the output at certain altitudes. Like expect every thousand feet, you lose about three and a half percent. Um, output power. I mean, all normal things, right? It was a really nice, courteous email that they sent out proactively. So I know at least the vendor is rock solid. 
Now I'm trying to figure out what the company is. But the build quality is excellent. The company that made this contract manufacturer, Sensi, they've been around a long time. They make excellent generators for like AI power and others. Um, overall, I think that's a good company. But now we got to figure out if this Heo Mato company that's brand new, if they're worth a hill of beans, because I, I really don't know. Um, it's going to be one of those things we're going to have to slowly figure out if they respond and what they do. And I will put that in the video description. So if I start getting responses, if the Amazon seller gets me all the information that I asked for, I will put that in the video description. So do take that into account. Now, with me saying that, that might push you to the Pulsar, but do keep in mind Pulsar's support, they're spotty as heck too. Sometimes they respond quickly. Sometimes they don't. Sometimes they never respond to your messages. Um, sometimes it's, it's like they respond to the totally wrong thing that you asked. So I can't say that they are shining stars, but they do have a good product that, again, a contract manufacturer makes for them. Um, that's really all I got to say. I hope this helps you guys out. It's really neat being in this world of where the efficiency and the modern technology is shrinking things like these generators where they're getting smaller and smaller and more and more output, and more and more fuel efficient, and um, it, it is a pretty neat world to live in. So yeah, I hope you guys have a great one, and I will catch you later. Peace.